Good morning, Coach Slack here. Uh, continuing our readings through the ascetical homilies of St. Isaac the Syrian. I believe this is day 19. Uh, still working our way through homily 3, uh, page 132. Question. What is the purity of the mind? Answer. The man who is pure in mind is not he who has no knowledge of evil, for that is to be like a brute beast, nor he who is by nature on the level of infants, nor again he who never takes up human affairs, nor yet is purity of mind that we should not beseech men for any created thing. But purity of the mind is this, to be wrapped in things divine, and this comes about after a man has practiced the virtues. We are not so bold as to say that anyone has achieved this without experience of evil thoughts. For in such a case he would not be clad with a body. For until death we cannot dare to say that our nature is not warred upon or harmed. And by experience of evil thoughts I do not mean to submit to them, but to make a beginning to struggle with them. The movement of thoughts in a man originates from four causes. Firstly, from the natural will of the flesh. Secondly, from the imagination of the world's sensory objects which a man hears and sees. Thirdly, from mental predispositions and from the aberration of the soul. And fourthly, from the assaults of the demons who wage war with us in all the passions through the causes which we have already mentioned. For this reason, till death, a man cannot be without thoughts and warfare so long as he is in the life of the flesh. If... Before the destruction of this world, or before a man's death, one of these four causes could possibly be done away with, or whether it be possible for the body not to seek its needs and not to be compelled to desire any of the world's goods, judge for yourself. But if it is absurd to suppose any such thing, since our nature is in need of the world's goods, then it follows that the passions move in the man who is clad with a body, whether he wills it or not. Wherefore, every man must guard himself. By the word passion, I do not speak of one sort only, which openly and continually moves within a man, or of two, but of many kinds, since he is clad with a body. Although those who have vanquished the passions by means of the virtues are vexed by thoughts and the assaults of these four causes, yet they are not overcome, because they have power and their mind is caught away into good and divine recollections." So uh, the first thing that came to mind <clears throat> was, um, you know, the virtue of self-control. You know, it's like when uh, St. Isaac was saying at the end, although those who have vanquished the passions by means of the virtues are vexed by thoughts and assaults of the, these four causes. So the thoughts are going to be there. Uh, it's the self-control or self-discipline to not act on these thoughts or temptations. Yet they are not overcome because they have power and their mind is caught away into good and divine recollections and to use our relationship with God uh, to, to have this self-control and um, self-discipline. Meaning, you know, without God, like with man, some of these things are impossible, but with God, they are not impossible. And then the other thing that was coming to mind as I was reading this kind of fondly um, was my former parish priest one time we were talking I think we were having a confession or maybe just a, a discussion he was helping me with some things and he says you know Brian we, we cannot help these thoughts from entering our mind or, or coming into us uh, through our senses but we have to uh, create like a floodgate we, we got to be very careful to not let them you know these temptation and these thoughts to enter our mind and our senses to enter into our heart and to take root and uh you know, if any of you garden or have ever grown something, you know, whether it be flowers, vegetables, maybe a tree or something like that, <clears throat> you know, if something can't take root, then it withers away, right? So if we don't feed and water and nurture these bad thoughts or these temptations, then we can kind of choke them out, um, much like the good things that we try to do. It's like, you know, to wake up every day and eat a healthy meal or something like that. And it's like if we nurture that and force it at first, after about a month, it becomes the habit, right? So the same thing with the bad things. It's like if we uh, nurture, entertain these thoughts, remind them, remember them, you know, very soon they can become a bad habit. Uh, so I think that's what he was talking to me about a little bit where, you know, these thoughts and temptations are going to be there, but don't let them take root in your heart and become 
habits or, or way of life uh, that can lead to uh, bad things or destruction, um, both in body and soul. Um, and so, anyhow, so these are some of the thoughts that I had. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.